The next one we're going to take a look at is going to be a little bit different. So this one is the function of px equals negative parentheses x plus 5 squared x minus 1 and x minus 4 in parentheses. So we have to take a look at the y-intercept, the zeros, what degree it is, and what the graph is going to look like. So let's get started. Let's do the math. So first things first. Let's see where the graph is going to go and where it's going to end. Or where it's coming from and it's going to. Like a train. Since we have to look at the coefficient for the end behavior, we look right here. But looks like that we have a negative as the first coefficient. The leading coefficient. So when it's a negative, the line is going to go down to quadrant number 4 which is going to be on this side towards negative infinity. But hang on, we still need to look at something. So if A is negative, what else do we need to look at? Definitely, yeah! The degree, the degree is going to talk about the exponent in the first equation or the first expression part. We have an exponent of 2. Is that an even exponent or an odd exponent? Yeah, it's an even exponent, meaning that the graph is going to look like this. So here's what's going to happen. We are going to uh, we are going to have the line go this way and also the line go that way. These are where the lines are going to go to and from. The next thing we can take a look at is, we haven't done this yet, but we're going to try to look at the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is just like the other y-intercepts we have learned in the previous algebra videos, where the line strikes through the y-axis. So we need to find out why or what the y-axis is, or the, what the y-intercept is. We need to insert everything as 0 in for the x. We need to equal everything to 0 because we should say 0, 6 as a y-intercept. So here's what's going to happen. 0 equals negative hmm, 0 plus 5 squared times x, oh, 0 minus 1 squared, parentheses 0 minus 4. When we do the math and try to do it all out, we're going to get 5 squared is going to be 25. 20, negative 25, multiply that by negative 1, multiply that by negative 4. Into all the x's into 0 and transform. When we do that, we get a final answer of n negative 100. So our coordinate is going to be 0, comma, negative 100. That is going to be the y-intercept. So 0, comma, negative 100. But how are we going to fit that on a really big graph, which we don't have a really big graph. It's on an 8 by 11 piece of paper. So what we're going to do is we're going to just mark it down. So we are going to mark it right here, just for a reference, which is going to be negative 100 as a y. So we have the y-intercept, but what about the zeros? Where is the parabola? No, not a parabola. Where is the polynomial going to strike the x-axis? In order to do that, we need to find the zeros. So let's start bringing it down to the zeros. We have one, two, three objects on the field. Let's try it out. x plus 5 equals 0. x minus 1 equals 0. And x minus 4 equals 0. x plus 5 equals 0. So x equals negative 5. It's the opposite x is going to equal positive 1. And on this side, x is going to equal positive 4. But there is a little problem that we need to solve. 
if you notice on the x plus 5, there is a square happening onto the thing. A square happening onto the thing. Hmm. Uh-oh. That means there's a duplicate. When you have an exponent of something other than 1, there's going to be a duplicate. So in reality, we're going to have x equals negative 5 twice. What is this called? Well, if you take a look at it, it's going to be called a multiplicity. But a multiplicity, what is that? Hmm. A multiplicity is how many times the same number of x shows up when using the zero product property or when you find the zeros. The amount of multiplicities is going to depend on how it will strike the x-intercept. So for example, if you have just one multiplicity, you just have a line. A straight line going through the x-intercept. I cannot lose. Come at me. If you have a quadratic, the line is not going to strike or go through the x-intercept. It's going to bounce off, barely touching it. It's a quadratic, and that's when you have two of the same x's. It's going to bounce off. The last one is going to be a cubic. That means if you have three multiplicities, you will have a line that will completely strike through the x-intercept. So, So, if you wanted to understand where our problem went, we have a multiplicity of 2. So, I'm just going to write m-2 to help us understand there's a multiplicity of 2. And that is definitely going to affect what we have on the xy graph. Here's another thing that we need to understand, is since we have an object of 2, there's going to be something that we saw. We have 1, 2, 3, 4. So earlier when we said that there's actually three objects on the field, instead we are going to have four objects on the field instead. And if we realize that there's just four, four as an exponent is still going to keep it as the same thing. So there's no change because it's going to have the same exponents leading of this rule right here, where the graph is going to be modeled just like that one. So, before starting a problem, look at the exponents, because the amount of x's that show up are how many times it, how many times it is present on the field, but also changes if the exponent that is even or is odd. Now, here comes the exciting part, graphing. So, what we're going to do is change the graph. Therefore, all these will go into here. The first one is going to be negative 5. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we also have x is 1 and x is 4. So, 1, 2, 3, 4. Since negative 5 has two multiplicities, I'm going to color code it red. And the rest is just going to be black. So here is what the graph is going to look like. The line starts from the arrow and goes up to the red dot. But it barely touches it because it's a quadratic. A quadratic because there's two multiplicities. And it's going to look like this. So it's going to barely touch the red x-intercept. Then it's going to go down and go through the y-intercept, and then speed up 
and go way up here because it's just one multiplicity, then go straight down, way down here towards negative infinity. So that is what the parabola is going to look like. A sizzling snake. <sighs> So yeah, we have done it! We now know how to graph and visualize a polynomial! I hope this video has helped you understand graphing polynomials. Thank you for watching Tapio Life's Math Industry. Like and subscribe!